cannot do sporadic planning where you've already budgeted for the year 2019, and in the middle of the year you're being told we're increasing NHIF, we're introducing housing levy, we want to increase the National Industrial Training Authority levy, we want you to pay more on, on uh, NSSF. So all these things make it very difficult for businesses to plan. So predictability in the regulatory and the policy environment. We want reasonable taxes so that if uh, companies are to create jobs, they need to be given incentives to be able to do that. We want tax rebates in areas like internships to be able to allow young Kenyans to learn from industry. To do that, you need to get some sort of recognition from government to allow you to do that. That is Jacqueline Mogo, the FKE boss, just giving her take on uh, all this, why companies are laying off and all that. She had that conversation with my colleague Brenda Kerubo earlier this week. And now we continue with the conversation that we've been having. Remember, we have been asking you what you think are bad policies to blame for the recent mass layoffs that we have been witnessing. And now on set with me is Wangari Moike, a public finance management specialist and Anthony Kibagendi, the, uh, he's the Secretary of Youth Affairs from the Office of uh, the Deputy President. Thank you so much for joining me. Kibagendi, I want to start with you. A promise was made. 1.3 million jobs for the youth annually, every year. Where are the jobs? Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is such a, a complicated and, uh, can I call it, difficult topic to handle. Uh, but first, I, I, we would want to uh, agree that is there a problem? Yes, there is a problem. What are and you doing about it? And what are we doing about it? Yes. Now, uh, you, what happened, the lady who was here has really inspired a lot of people to come out and talk about the challenges they face in terms of uh, losing jobs and those who haven't gotten jobs. And uh, uh, I can say uh, one of the reasons we are in what we are is that the big four agenda that the government had uh, is actually working on hasn't taken off uh, the way it should be it should have taken off but that is happening if you look at the possible opportunity uh, job opportunities that are coming out of the big four uh, we are doing uh, the government is doing about 500,000 jobs and this how uh, these uh, 500,000 houses and these houses are spread across all the counties yeah <coughs> If, for example, uh, in, uh, let's say, Kiambu County, they'll be doing 5,000 uh, houses for Kiambu residents. 5,000 houses will need a minimum of five people to do one house, yeah? In terms of job opportunities, that is a total of close to 25,000 uh, jobs. That is one. Number two, uh, opportunities in business. The opportunities that come with uh, construction from supply of sand, supply of cement, supply of locks, supply of, 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 of uh, let's say, doors and all that, those are, again, jobs that will come out of that. The other thing uh, you realize that government has pushed its focus on young people to get, get into TVETs. Technical education uh, is key in achieving the big four. So through technical education, we'll have personnel to actually get involved in the big four. And out of all this, again, People who graduate from technical uh, uh, institutions, they don't have to wait for jobs per se. If you're a plumber, if you're a carpenter, if you're a, an electrician, you get straight into the job market through what we call self-employment. But again, a lot needs to be done in terms of regulations, in terms of reviewing our tax regime. And there are a lot of things that are happening in the background where government, you know, most young people or Kenyans in general, uh, have the assumption that when government is planning uh, on doing something, they need to continually update the population, the citizens. That is where we have a challenge because definitely as we speak, there are a number of committees in place that are reviewing from the tax regime, from how we need to deal with the, uh, the population explosion, how we deal with, you know, in a year, a million people get into the job market. They graduate from uh, universities, polytechnics, and even from four graduates. And hence, the government has a plan of how they are going to deal with this uh, population, from actually creating jobs locally to exporting human resource. That is great, Mr. Kibagandi. But when will we see the results? Because 
uh, there's been a tag of a lot of talk and great talk for that matter, great promises, a hope of a bright future, but no action. You're telling us, you know, the big four agenda is yet to kick off. When do we expect this to happen? Because we're telling people we'll give them jobs, but that is not happening. And what is happening right now is those that have the jobs, they're losing them. Uh, you know, uh, we have sectors, you know. There are sectors that are, of course, blossoming. There are sectors that are doing very well, yeah. And there are certain sectors that are actually affected by what is going on right now. And this challenge is not uh, only for happening in, in, in Kenya. In Africa, for example, we have the median age in Africa is about 19 years. And in Kenya is 18 years, which means the bulk of the population is young. And that is why we are feeling this. For the economy to actually thrive and grow at a, 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 a percentage that can absorb a, a majority of these young people, the government has to ensure we have a, an, a conducive environment in terms of availability of infrastructure, transport. And if you go to any part of this country, you'll see some construction, road construction going on. Yeah? Number two, the government has to ensure uh, we have power, electric power. Uh, when Jubilee took over, there were about 2.7 million people who were homes that were connected to power. Right now, we have almost 8 million homes connected to power. That means now we are ready for takeoff. The other thing are regulations. And again, you need to know government is not just about regulating. They are also a facilitator. And that is why when there are challenges of this nature, I know uh, pretty soon, the president and the deputy president will be reaching out to FKE for them to look at what are the challenges we are facing and what can we do about it. Uh, government is not, most people assume that government is just about regulations, you have to pay taxes, you have to do all this. It is also about enabling so that uh, businesses can thrive and people get uh, 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 these opportunities. Last year, uh, from KNBS, about 800,000 jobs were created. Yeah. Uh, mainly in the informal sector, yeah? And uh, that may not actually resonate with majority of Kenyans who are qualified uh, with degrees or probably even diplomas, yeah? And that is why you see there are few young people that even come on TV that I have a stat I'm a statistician, a degree, and I have had to go back to farm. Uh, the, the jobs in that sector may not have come out uh, uh, right now. But opportunities, as we keep moving, opportunities will be coming. Of course, we need to also challenge those in those specific positions of influence or uh, policy making uh, positions mm -hmm. in certain sectors in government for them to be able to do what needs to be done in a, in, 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 in a more efficient way. Mm -hmm. We cannot lump all the problems uh, on the president and the deputy. Mm -hmm. For example, we recently had a census. Mm -hmm. The census was, there are young people that were employed to actually count uh, enumerators and supervisors. To date, they have not been paid. That, for those young people, they don't understand because for them, the blame is supposed to be with the president and his deputy. But the truth is, there are certain inefficiencies and individuals who ha make this happen. You who know. is sleeping on their job? Because uh, the work was done. Right? Yes. Enumerators did what they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Why have they not been paid? That is KNBS. They need to take blame. The CEO there needs to be taken to task. It is not... Uh, now, the president has provided an enabling environment. The government, the executive, and even parliament has approved budgets. Now, why are they taking too long? Those are the questions. Sometimes, even some of us in government, we wonder why. The president says, why don't we, we, before the next financial year, let us deal with all pending bills. Mm -hmm. And then there are people in government who feel uh, they'll pay people as they feel. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Yet a directive has come from the president. Mm -hmm. And that is what causes the trickle-down effect. When a contractor is not paid, his workers are not paid, his service providers are not paid, mm -hmm. those service providers don't pay their rent, the, the landlord doesn't pay his bills. You know, like that, it affects everyone okay. in the in the, in okay. the, in the Just pyramid. hold it there because I need to rope in Wangari, a public finance management specialist. Wangari, many companies are in the woods. How big is this crisis? Well, it, 
Let's take a step back and think through uh, why we're having this, this issue. I think, the, I think if I would to classify them, I'd say there are four main issues uh, which are affecting business today. So one, we're having, of course, a lot of mismanagement. Uh, a lot of firms that are coming, you know, for example, the, the Nakumats of, um, of Kenya, there's a lot of mismanagement happening and the regulatory environment uh, is not strong enough to regulate these big um, employers in the, in the market. Um, then you have uh, issues of unfair trade practices where they, we have a lot of cheap imports coming into the country, uh, which is unfair competition for the, for the sectors, especially the manufacturing sector um, here in, uh, in Kenya. So unfair, unfair trade policies, cheap imports is also affecting uh, business and having them closed down. Um, another one is inputs, uh, for example, electricity energy, mm -hmm. those are very hard, especially uh, with the president's um, endeavor to push the big four, and one of those is manufacturing. The real challenge is, do you have energy, um, the electricity ready for uh, manufacturing to thrive? So for example, one unit of, um, of, electric, of, of energy here in, Nero in Kenya costs about 17 shillings. The same unit costs 12 shillings in, in Tanzania, same unit costs nine shillings in India, three shillings in China. So of course, a competitive edge in Kenya is, is quite low. Um, and so these inputs really affect business and the ability of business to thrive um, and to make profits mm -hmm. and to generate jobs. Mm -hmm. And the last one I would say is, for example, is, is the interest rate cap. The lady who was here earlier talked about, uh, you know, maybe we can start a business. Maybe we can, uh, you know, if we run, uh, if we're not employed, we can do something. We have uh, the skill. But if you don't have the cap, the capital you are not going to be able to translate those job, the, those skills into jobs. We were very happy when we saw the interest rate caps come and everybody was like, yes, finally, the interest rate is going to be low and we're going to be able to afford. Mm -hmm. But we didn't see the backlash. We didn't see the banks coming and saying, well, we're not going to take risky, um, ri we're going to let, uh, give risky loans. And so a huge component of uh, the population who would otherwise be getting loans are not able to get loans. And unfortunately, these are the young people who desperately need the jobs mm -hmm. who are not going to be able to access those mm -hmm. jobs. So I think um, there is a lot of structural, uh, there's a lot of structural challenges that uh, partly also the government should help us create an enabling environment for these, um, for these challenges to, uh, to, to us to overcome these challenges now. But if you look on the flip side, mm -hmm. if you look at the GDP growth, we're seeing high GDP growth. You know, this, uh, I think 2018 was about 5.7 GDP growth. And what people kept saying, like, why, why are we uh, seeing growth, but we're not seeing it in our jobs? Mm -hmm. So there's some structural challenges that we're having. Okay, um, in the okay Wangar, I'm told we need to take a break. Uh, we'll come back with a conversation after this break. A lot of feedback. Evans Minsaf is saying, yes, I would also add that high taxes and postman companies are leading to employees layoff. Corruption is the worst dragon that we are facing as Kenyans. When you talk of corruption, you cannot escape from saying one has been selfish, thus not considering the welfare of the rest. Keep it coming at KTNSKE, at Grace Korea KE. Let's 